Okay. Stream is starting, which also means the recording is starting. I've been recording these for Patreon. Every time I finish one, I just like substitute my weekly blog post on there with a sketchbook tour or something like that. Um, but it's easy to just do it while I'm streaming. Um, feels almost more natural because I might be talking to someone in the chat also. You know what I mean? Like it's not just going out into the void. Anyways, uh, this is not actually a sketchbook. It's a sketch roll. I've been buying these for a couple months now. This one, I guess, started in probably like mm, April. I didn't write on here, but it's from this year. Maybe I should do that, right? Just write on it like 2021. Uh, yeah. 2021. 20, Anyways. I really like these big rolls because it's very uh, tangential, I guess is a good way to put it. Sorry, the camera's going wacky. It's kind of like train of thought kind of thing, and I don't ever have to turn the page. Like, everything that I recently did is right right next to what I'm doing. So I can, you know, study human ha uh, Loris hands, and then also move on to Loris heads, mixed in with all these other illustrations that include both of those things. Um, so it's really fun. This is a, started out as my, like, warrior primates role. I was like, I'm going to just draw everything I need for my warrior primates project all the sketches and stuff will be on here. I kind of moved away from that when I started working on it with Peter Hahn, because uh, I did a lot of that work digitally, just to make presenting it easier. Um, but I still really uh, learned a lot from this role. And uh, I think there's also some other stuff in the end. I ended up doing lots of different things just because I needed paper. I didn't have any. I went to the store to buy another one. There wasn't one. I bought three so far. But... I supplemented it with like a giant pad of paper, which is also nice because it's just big. But there's something about having this all in a roll that's great. The only downside is it does this, which is obnoxious. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's take a little stroll here. So yeah, a lot of these were just like I found an image of tank that I needed and then I put monkeys in it. <laughs> so these are slow Loris characters, um, very heavily referenced straight to ink kind of drawing um i also just did like some fun i was i think i was just testing out how stuff would work on here without bleeding and it doesn't actually bleed that much it works pretty well this paper's thin you can see through it pretty well um but i don't ever have anything under it so that's fine and um nothing bleeds or um you know pretty much everything works i think alcohol based marker doesn't do as well um, it's going to eat up my marker because it absorbs so much of it. But for like ink and stuff, like this is just colored inks, it works great. So that's pretty cool. So anyways, I'm just going to scroll through this. Lots of explorations, finding different images of the tanks, different images of the lorises, trying to represent them in different ways. There are some weird looking lorises out there, for the record. They have a very strange profile and huge eyes. That would be funny to have like some lazy, slow, goofy night owl looking things in these big machines of war. Um, I watched the movie Fury around this time, so I was pulling a lot of screen uh, caps from that and replacing the characters with... Like that one is um, Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> replacing them with slow lorises. Um, there's a couple other random monkeys in here too. Again, this is just for my Warrior Primates project, so pretty much anything that falls in that realm lands in here. So that's a capuchin monkey, um, another Shia LaBeouf. Oh, no, maybe that's Logan Lerman. Yeah, inside the tank. What's up, Parmu? How's it going? Welcome. We're just doing a little sketchbook tour recording for my Patreon. For this movie, they actually built um a replica tank interior that they could pull apart to get different camera angles inside and they also built it at 1.5 times scale so it's like slightly bigger and roomier but tanks are super cramped so it would be really hard to actually shoot stuff with camera and have the actors act like natural so they built the tank at 1.5 times scale which is pretty cool actually so this is like slightly bigger than it would be and it already looks really cramped so and then uh, I think this tank, 
this one was reference and then that one was no reference. So after I drew like six of these, I was pretty comfortable with it. It's just like a, a short event. Here is a Minesweeper variant. They spun this thing around to hit mines in the ground and blow them up before it hit the tracks. Here's some Gibbons. I think I was working on a card where it was going to be like um, a Minesweeper Gibbon, which I ended up doing in the end, and then a tank crew, and they're waiting on the Gibbon to like clear the mines out front. So this is just like a lot of exploration. Not really any design path. I didn't really know anything about that yet. Now I do. But um, I really like that drawing and that drawing. Those are like really fun. And these are cool too, but just those close-ups worked really well. I need to go back to using that gray ink more. I like it a lot. We got some colored pencil variants of different types of Gibbon. Another Loris sticking his head out the hatch. And then I think we have like a bunch of thumbnails for a card. And they're essentially all the same thing, but just various camera angles. Didn't really get me anywhere. I don't think I ever ended up making a card. I tried. I got a big piece of paper, but I just like kept failing. So I think I ended up changing my direction in the end, which worked out. But this illustration is still in the cards. So this is kind of what I was thinking. So this is still a possibility for the future. I might do it. I like this version right here. If I was going to do it. This one's not bad either. It's just like when it's so small, it's going to be so hard to see these characters. So it's really hard to find a way to, you know, make everything visible without, you know, losing the actual image. Um. I don't know why there's so much blank space here. That's, um, someone asked me to draw Spyro from memory. Nope. And then I found reference. <laughs> uh, this is when my, uh, design class started. So there's a bunch of tank iterations. I was basically like redesigning a tank. Um, so I picked this one because I wanted to use this one in my warrior primates project. So I was like, I'll just get really comfortable with tanks. Um, it ended up going way different and I, you know, I'm much better at doing this now because I didn't really know how. But um, just a lot of tank explorations. They're pretty weird. Pretty poor draftsmanship too. Need to construct things a little more. I can't remember which one I ended up going with. I don't know if it's on here. Um, then we got a couple more sketches for the Warrior Primates thing. This is now the Gibbon, the Engineer Gibbon card. This is the, what I ended up going with in the end. And then the rest of these drawings are from the last week I had, uh, my figure drawing class started. So these are the first, like, 30 figures that I drew for the class. They're all about, like, a minute and a half, two minutes. I started off drawing really big, too. Um, which is much harder to get the proportion correct when it's that large. Eventually, I kind of found, like, the correct size. It's, like, about here. Not correct, but, like, this is where I'm most comfortable. But now I feel like I did 200 of these this last week, and I need to vary it more because I now I can only draw figures at this size. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll draw the head smaller to begin differently, and then I'll end up making the body the same, and then the head looks really small. It's a problem. But I really like these. Um, just after one lecture, my figure drawing like got a thousand times better. So I like this is like a turning point for me. This page when I first started like doing it, and it felt good, and they looked looked decent. The scroll is uh, eighteen inches tall, so like a foot and a half by um, thirty yards. So. 90, 90 feet. I think that's right. I don't know what that is in metric, but I'm close to six feet and this is 90 feet long. So what is that like 13 of me? No, 15 of me.
So this is great for figure drawing because um, it's cheap paper. I think these are like ten, twelve dollars. It's a lot of um, it's a lot of surface area to fill with sketches, and um, it's also really cool. I wish I had a whole scroll full of figure drawing because I could roll it out and see the progression. How do my first figures look versus my last, and see the entire thing all on one big piece of paper? But again, they were out of this when I went to look, so I'm doing it on. <laughs> a big pad of paper instead. Some of these are rough. There's a lot of lines that don't need to be there. Um, my line economy already is better after 200. I'll be doing um, some more this week, but with a different focus. So I'm not going to do as many, but yeah. And there's number 30. And that's the end of the roll. Um, I think these are called... It's like Borden and Riley vellum sketch roll. I don't know what, I mean, I guess vellum is like a technicality, but most vellum is really smooth and maybe even translucent. This is not either of those things. It's kind of rough, which has a, it's nice. It's got a little bit of tooth, like pencil looks pretty cool on it. Um, ink does not bleed on it. These are all with, um, this is a very flighty ink. It's like fountain pen ink. Um, and there's a little bit of like feathering here and there where it like bleeds out of the line, but it's not noticeable. And if you're just sketching, like you're not going to be like chopping pieces of paper out of this to do like commission work on or anything. Um, so it is awesome for um, just drawing. It's called Borden and Riley. I think it's just vellum sketch roll. It's like $11. Recommend it. All right. That's my tour for this week. <laughs> um, I'm getting close to finishing another sketchbook. This one is close, so that's this will probably be the next one. How many pages we got left in here? This is yesterday, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. I guess two weeks we'll probably be done with this sketchbook. Yeah. Very nice. Tour for that one, but yeah, I think this is the this is the third roll that I filled this year of this size, which feels pretty good. And then I have like twelve sketchbooks, so not to brag or anything, but it's uh, been a very prolific year for drawing. Um, and I would honestly be filling another one right now, but they didn't have it at the store, so <laughs> I might order one. And the problem with sketch rolls is a lot of them are. They're long and they're great paper, super nice quality. Like I have a big Canson roll behind me that's like mixed media paper, super thick. You can put literally anything on there. Like you can paint on it and it works. Um, but they only sell it in like four foot by, you know, 30 yards or whatever. So it's way too big for my desk. I can't, and I can't like chop the whole thing in half unless I had like a chop saw, I guess, but that's not gonna, that's not gonna be nice for the paper. <laughs> Um, and it's way cheaper to buy it in a roll form than it is to buy that much surface area in a sketchbook form, because when they make it into a book and bind it and give it a cover and do everything to it, it makes it cost way more. But if it's just the uncut piece of paper, that's a huge roll, it's super cheap. And I prefer to draw on it that way too, but they don't make it in small enough increments usually. So I have to go with this budget Borden and Riley vellum stuff. And it's like you know, really hard to find and it's not the highest quality. Um, but it is cheap. So at least there's that. They do also, sm uh, smell. They also sell smaller. Um, like you can get like thumb, uh, I think it's called thumbnail sketch paper and it's really, uh, translucent and thin. It's smooth. So it'll work for most things. It's not like tissue paper or anything or like rice paper it's really smooth and like dense but it's really thin so it's translucent so that's the trade-off it's like it's meant to be like tracing paper um or like uh gravestone rubbing paper whatever it's called um but if you just get a big piece of white paper and put it on your desk and then use that on top of it you shouldn't have a problem but again like it's just not going to be as durable they smell solar paper okay anyways that's i'm going to stop my recording now that's the uh, that's the end of the tour. We'll have another one in probably two weeks. <laughs>